by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed his child. We're looking at John uh, at verse 30, John chapter 5, and verse 32. And um, we talked about uh, John 5, 31 and how Jesus said, if I give a witness of myself, my witness is not true. And what that means, and it really means that Jesus was adhering to everything that was written in the Bible by God for us to follow. Jesus wasn't saying that he would tell us a lie. He was just saying, I'm going to stick to the law God gave us. Gave us. And at the end of verse 31, he tells us, which is where verse 32 starts, that there's another who bears witness uh, of who he really is. And of course, that's the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about verse 32. I just gave you a little introduction to it last time, and we're going to talk more about it now because of the how big an issue it really is. Um, there's a, a program on TV called One Life to Live. You've heard of that? Oh, yeah. One of these soaps? Um, that's true, though. You know, you think about it. We've only got one life to live. There's a, there's a office depot or somebody's commercial on TV. they got this little button that says do over. So I guess if you were a, a Muslim, or not a Muslim, but a, uh, one of the isms out of uh, the Middle East, you had believed in reincarnation, you'd think that button was real. But there are no do-overs in life. Everything that we've done has been written in a book. Everything we've done. The good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, it's all been written down. And the sad part is, for all of us, the bad and the ugly probably outweigh the good two to one. Two to one, at least. And it may be 75% of it is uh, bad and ugly, and only 25% is really good. Maybe even a lot less than that. I don't know. But how is, does all that happen? How, how does all that take place? Uh, I, in my mind, I, at least I can see there's a bunch of angels up there writing books. A book for everybody that's here on earth. Maybe that's what our guardian angel does. I don't know. The Bible teaches that we've got a guardian angel that follows us around. Maybe they just follow us around with a recorder, record everything that goes on, they can see inside of our mind, and they know all the thoughts we think, and they know exactly where we're headed and what we're doing and what's going on inside. Well, yeah, that's kind of scary, you think about it. It's kind of scary. This verse, verse 32, says, There's another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Now, if somebody bears witness of Jesus, guess what? Somebody's bearing witness of us. Everything we do, good, bad, somebody's writing it down somewhere. There's always somebody else who sees what's going on. Now we know the Holy Spirit's always there because the Holy Spirit's present in our life. But you ever seen this scenario happened before an accident takes place five people see the accident and the police come and they're all still there and they get a written report from everybody and then nobody's testimony is the same it's all different why because we all see different aspects of the truth and it's tainted by our idea of what truth really is in the first place Five people see an accident, you get five different reports, none of them agree, so who do they believe? The whole idea is other people see what you and I do. Think about that. Do you think they understand what's going on in your head as you're doing something for somebody else and 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 they don't understand and they understand what your, your motives are and what the out, what outcome you're looking for and, and, and if you're trying to do good or, or any of that kind of stuff. You, th you know, I don't think they do either. Uh, 
what do they see? They see their truth. You know, it could be, uh, I don't know, there's a story that's gone around on the internet about uh, this little child goes into a McDonald's with its mother and and they sit down to have lunch or breakfast or something and uh, this beggar walks in, this, this person off the street, a uh, black man, dirty, uh, in dirty clothes, gets a cup of coffee and goes sits down. And this little child gets up and goes over and sits in the guy's lap and hugs him. Uh, and mom's a little put back by all this, but uh, basically the little girl gets down and goes back to her mom and the guy comes over and tells the mom, you just made my day, you know, uh, by letting her do that. Uh, now you and I wouldn't understand that and somebody else seeing it wouldn't understand that because we weren't part of it. And I don't even know if it really happened, but you understand how what's inside of somebody and motivates them to do something we, we can't see. But there's somebody that's writing it down. The Holy Spirit knows what's going on in my mind, your mind, everybody's mind, and they're keeping track of it all. For everybody on earth. Uh, and they don't, and you and I don't know really what happens. We can see an event take place. We don't really know what happens. We see a series of things happen, which we can attest to as fact, but we don't know motives behind any of it. If we were to call it up in a, in a court of law and, and they ask us, all we could attest to was the facts that we saw. No motives. We could not attest to that. We have no idea what was going on. Holy Spirit does not that away, though. The Holy Spirit sees everything. Uh, it sees whether or not we're doing God's will the way God wants us to do it. He sees that. And others may miss the point and not understand and even bear false witness against us. But the Holy Spirit is writing down the facts, truth, all the time. That's what it says. Another, and it, I'm just going to read to you from the Greek because that, that's what it says. Another, he is always the one, always witnessing with respect to me. Well, that's kind of scary. There's somebody that sees everything I do and they're, they're writing it down. Only one life to live. No, no do-overs. They're writing down what I'm doing right now. Now truth is what really is taking, is keeping track of what's going on. Truth is keeping track of truth. If Jesus said, I am the truth, then the Holy Spirit's truth, God's the truth. And the witness that's being written about us is the truth. So the question becomes, who do we listen to? Who do we listen to? When, when we decide to do something, are we listening to what God wants us to do? Are we listening to our own selfish desires? And it's not beyond us to be doing what Satan wants us to do. Even though he's not in our lives, he can certainly influence us to do wrong. Some people in the world, and, and you understand this, everything everybody's doing is being written down. Everything. Some people only listen to the lies why? Because their father is the father of lies. I was watching a video on, on the internet today and that woman was just listening to the lies and repeating them and, and sticking to the lies. But there's people out there that do that. You understand that? Most of the world is listening to the lie. I saw a a presentation today and uh, oh, our, 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 our uh, chief executive officer uh, whose initials are BHO 
and I call him Beho uh, for short, he, he wears a ring on his ring finger. And it's a gold ring he's had on there since his days at Occidental College. Not a wedding ring. He has not replaced it with a ring from Michelle after he met Michelle, which was eight or ten years later. But he's had that ring on his finger since the days of Occidental. They got pictures of him at Occidental College, and he's got that ring on. And the ring says on it in Arabic, there is no God but Allah. Did you know he wore that? He's listening to a lie. It's sad. But he's essentially said, I'm married to Allah, which means he's a Muslim. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. But he's listening to a lie. That's all he's listening to. Now, as a Muslim, do you understand? That gives him the right to lie to every one of us so he can do what he wants to do. You understand that? That's a fact. That's what the Koran says. Some people only listen to lies because their father is the father of lies. And that's Satan. And that's just a fact. The majority of the people in the world are in that somewhere. Now, the other side is some people, you know, have the, have the angel on one side and the devil on the other. They're not sure who to listen to. They just do whatever they want to back and forth. They vacillate back and forth, blowing here, blowing there. It's, you know, whatever's good, whatever I like, you know. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's right or wrong. But there's a whole group of people out there who are trying, who are, who are on this trial in between, between doing it right and doing it all wrong. And there's a lot of people in the world that fit that. So the majority of the world is listening to lies or half-baked. You understand that? Very few people in the world follow the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you understand a lot of people have a lot of bad stuff written about. But nonetheless, it's being written. Uh, some listen to the truth. Uh, may not always get it right. Not that we don't make mistakes, but you and I profess to be children of Jesus, and Jesus is the truth, and we're trying to do what Jesus wants. That's the whole idea, is submit the stuff to Jesus and let him decide which way to do, where, where to go, what decisions should be made, how to do it. Why is all this relevant to us? Uh, because this, this thing says, and it says this twice in this same sentence. But I'm just going to read it to you the way it's written in Greek. Another is always the one witnessing, always witnessing with respect to me. And I always know that truth is always the witness which he always witnesses about me. You understand how many times it says he's always witnessing? He's three times in that one verse. I think the whole point here is there's a witness that's going on that's always going on about us and about everybody else in the world, too. It's an ever-present witness that's being written. So you've got to ask yourself, what is being written about me? What's being written about me? Sometimes I want to cry thinking about that. What's being written about me? Why is it important? And this is a short lesson, but this is important because it's, in, so it's such a big verse. At the end of time, after the tribulation is over with, there's going to come a time when all those books are opened up. All those books that have been written are going to be opened up. Revelation Chapter 20, starting in verse 11, says this. I'm just going to read it to you. Now this, this is after, let me, let, me, let me make it. In verse 10, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, uh, where the beast and the false prophet already are, and, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So, the bad influence is gone now. 
Okay? So everybody can understand the truth in all of its glory in their lives. Okay? And then it says this. And I saw a great white throne. This is the great white throne judgment at the end of time. Okay? And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven tried to flee away. Well, they didn't want to see this coming. They didn't want to have to deal with this. And there was found no place for them to go. They're going to try to run and can't hide. The law of arm of the law has caught up with everybody finally. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books, books, plural. I can't imagine how many books were opened. Guess who's been writing those books? That's what this verse is all about. 532 is all about them writing those books. It says, and another book was opened, which was the book of life. All those books over here, and there's another book open, which is the book of life. And it's singular. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Everything they've ever done. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead that were in them, and they were judged every man according to what was written in the books. And then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. So no more death, no more Hades. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Well, there's going to be a lot of people saying, why didn't I just accept Jesus then? Now, no other book has an, a conclusion like this. You know, the Koran says, lie, cheat, steal, and uh, abuse women, children, and everything else in the name of Allah. That's okay. And when you get through, you'll go to paradise and have... 21 virgins or whatever it is. I don't know. This one says it's going to end up with you better do it right while you're here because they're writing a book that you're going to be judged out of. And if you didn't do it right, you're not in the book of life. You're going to go to hell. Not, not hell. You're going to go to the lake of fire forever and ever. Well, it's two different endings, you know? This one says Jesus loves you here. This one says Life is hell here. This one says there's going to be a great ending if you've done the right thing. This one says falsely. This one says the end is going to be you're going to be judged. If you're not in the book of life, you're going to go to the lake of fire. This one says no matter what you've done, if you followed me, you're going to go to paradise. That those don't jive, folks. The end of the story is totally different <coughs> in the two books. Even the Book of Mormon is different. <coughs> What's being written about you? That's, that's what you got to carry away. What is being written about you? There's a book being written. What's being written about you? <coughs> 